Hey yo, this is Dash, and this is your opportunity to ask me anything you want to. Well, almost anything. If you guys don't know, if you weren't around for last year, during the month of December, when barbecue views are down, we got to do something to help get those views back up. That being said, what I'm going to do for the month of December is you guys get to ask me almost anything. So all you have to do is leave a comment down below, ask me your question, and I hopefully will get to respond to it in the form of a video. So don't be bashful. It really won't take more than about half the month to hopefully get enough questions for me to answer and do a video every single day. I really would like for you to ask me a question down in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching, and I hope to answer your question soon. Is, is this thing on? I think it is. All right, so here we go with another one, another Ask Dash, and this should be Ask Dash number, our Ask Dash 2020 number 15, or episode 15. So this one, we're gonna talk about some, 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 some noob stuff, all right? So this one comes from, well, this first question comes from Devin, Devin Alou. He says, uh, I'm completely, I'm a complete grilling noob. I really want to get into grilling, but there's so much out there. How and where should I start? He says, thank you. All right. So first thing is keep it simple. Okay. Keep it simple. Basics. Your basic, I'm telling you the, the most basic thing that you can do. And unfortunately it's not the cheapest thing. I'm going to highly recommend a 22 inch Weber kettle. Get yourself a, a decent 22 inch Weber kettle. Get the one that has the, the, the ash dump on the bottom. Trust me, it'll, it'll save you in the long run. And with that 22 inch Weber kettle, you can do so much things, so many things rather. You can grill hot and fast, you can cook low and slow, you can do indirect cooking. And these are all topics and things that there are plenty. There are a plethora of videos, books, blog posts that people have done so many different things in on and with Weber kettles because they've been out there for such a long time so that covers the grill now one of the other things about the grill that you can use Weber's because they have such a long history they have a lot of different accessories there are I have a few links down below in in the description of accessories like the the vortex that you can get the slow and sear that you can get um some of the like the the rotisserie that you can get for it i mean the the abilities and the capabilities of a weber kettle are almost endless they are phenomenal phenomenal cookers okay and again you can cook hot and fast you can cook low and slow you can cook indirect you can do you know um like reverse searing rotisserie stuff and then you can use some of those accessories to help you take your your barbecue and or your grilling to a to a completely different level the the next piece is i'm going to tell you to start with using like a basic kingsford briquette okay and the reason why i would suggest the kingsford briquette is because it's predictable you know what what your heat is going to be you know where your heat is going to be my wife is coming with okay. you you know where all of those things are gonna gonna be as far as your your heat and then just do some get some basic things like a charcoal chimney to get it lit and you know you don't have to buy like every accessory under the sun kind of get it started get started and then you'll figure out what you need to buy or things that, that might help you the next piece is cook chicken chicken legs chicken thighs are the most forgiving once you kind of get better at cooking chicken legs, chicken thighs, then maybe move up to chicken wings. And then ultimately you can cook chicken breasts, especially if, you know, maybe if, if you're not a big chicken breast fan, but the chicken breast is going to be the hardest piece to cook. And then lastly, get yourself a decent thermometer, a decent instant read thermometer. Well, it'll level you up and it'll change the game for cooking because with grilling, you don't cook this for this amount of time 
blah, blah, no, you have to cook to an internal temperature because every single fire is gonna be different. If you put five extra briquettes or five fewer briquettes than you did the time before, your heat is gonna be higher or your heat is gonna be lower. And that has pretty, pretty lasting consequences if you ask me. All right, so that's the first part. Second part comes from uh, somebody uh, with the channel, Blind Man Cooking. All right, and so he says, what tips would you give somebody starting out in smoking? What are some good cuts of meat that you could start with that won't break the bank? Well, again, this is why I'm grouping these together in the same episode, chicken. Chicken is where I would suggest you start. Chicken is cheap, chicken is readily available, almost anybody can get chicken, and you don't have to buy like 40, 50 pounds of chicken in order to, I mean, you don't have to buy as much of it. So you can start out, and if you're doing a smaller cook, or if you're if you're doing a small test, you can test out with you know two to three to five pieces of chicken. And as far as somebody starting out in smoking, again, I'm going to point back or lean back on that Weber kettle. Kind of get your feet wet and see if it's actually something you want to do. There are there are a couple folks that went out and bought like the biggest baddest smoker, and then they use it, and then they don't know how to use it because they don't have the they didn't level up. They didn't slowly go into it. They just jumped in both feet. And sometimes you can get overwhelmed, especially with a wood burning smoker. It, it There is a steep, steep learning curve. And sometimes some people just don't have the patience to, to, to push through it. So a basic Weber kettle is, is going to be almost always my go-to suggestion for getting in the barbecue, getting in the smoking meats. And then chicken is definitely going to be my go-to for starting out so once you kind of master chicken then move on on and up to pork maybe you know between ribs and or like pork shoulder and then last but not least move on to like a brisket or something like that brisket costs too much to be messing it up ask me how i know and then you can move on to like some more exotic meats like maybe some fish and or like some lamb or other game and try to go there a rabbit i actually want to cook a rabbit i've seen a few different rabbit cooks recently and I do want to cook a rabbit. It's not like I'm going to go get a rabbit tomorrow. But, I mean, if I'm out somewhere and I see one, I might pick it up. I know Marcus will be happy about that. All right, so Blind Man Cooking, hopefully that answers that. And then here's another one uh, that kind of ties in, or I thought it did at the time when I got this question. Uh, Rod, uh, Rod, oh, Rod S. He says, where do I get my meat at for my catering business? I would like to start a catering business. So, Rod without knowing where you live um it's kind of hard to say where you can or should get meat from but i'm going to suggest that you start out local at like a, a local market you might be able to get in good with a local butcher or something along those lines but i tell you from my path from my experience i will go to the the wholesale club the big box stores sam's club costco bj's and i can get meat from there less expensively than I could at a butcher and also it'll be more cost effective buying in bulk than it would be going to like then it would be going to a, a regular supermarket or your local market just because it, you know unless you find like a family pack and then the price is about the same but I go to the wholesale the, you know wholesale Costco BJ's and Sam's, I don't actually have a, a BJ's card, but I have Costco and Sam's. And between Costco and Sam's, I prefer Sam's. Then the next piece or the next thing is going to be the restaurant depot. If you can find a restaurant depot or a restaurant supply store in your area, then that would be my next suggestion as to where you should go to get any any meat. And one of the other things too is if you find someone that's cooking something similar to what you want to cook ask them especially if they're in your area they might be able to tell you definitively like if someone came to me and said hey where do i go to get meat in baltimore oh all right well if you're in my area and you're on this side of town i highly recommend you go to the restaurant depot hey if you don't go to restaurant depot you can go up to the to, to the sam's up on route 40. if that one doesn't have it go down to the sam's on quarterfield road so because I know, because I buy meat so often, I buy it so frequently that I can pretty much say who has it. 
you know, there are times when Sam's might have brisket cheaper. There are times when Restaurant Depot might have brisket cheaper. But because I'm buying and in those few stores so often, I know who, who has what. So hopefully that helps. And I, I'm really, thank you, Devin, Blind Man Cooking, and Rod for asking your great questions um, and helping to make this a success. So I am uh, going to say thank you again, and I'll see you all in the next one.